in this question we are planning for upper full mode lower this 8 extraction and uh, no replacement of nerves ok question wants only the upper channel mode of course there are two premolars here two premolars here we can do uh, good contact here of course the uh, occlusion plane is not looking good because the scanning is looking very sharp we may have to do some uh, plastic in this later we may have to do some uh, core builder for crown or composite builder something ok so before planning for full mode we have to see the extra oral photos that is a must ok the first thing is extra oral smile photos are the important one here the patient is uh, not smiling actually he is showing e. ok so by the look we can tell it is a kind of class 3 you can look at the profile also it is a uh, classic class 3 so in classic uh, in the class 3 but it's kind of edge to edge if you see the lower ranges are lingually lingually inclined mm -hmm. that is the what is it indicates the retroclination of the lower anteriors indicates what it is a compensation of the nature Okay, because the mandible is going forward, mm -hmm. then what the T thinks is at least I will Adjust. incline lingually and make contact with the upper anterior so that for chewing it will be okay. Okay, if the lower inches are straight, straight you can see the reverse over mm -hmm. Okay, some cases there is no compensation, the lower inch is straight, that is severe. Uh, reverse uh, object. Now imagine if you straighten this lower incisor, there will be a cross bite kind of thing. Okay, you can see the canine is inclined lingually. Okay, the canine is lingually, the lower incisor, everything is inclined lingually. Okay, so the premolars they are inclined distally and lingually because of the non-replacement of 6 the 7 is measly tilted ok see the occlusal interference it is creating ok so the lower 7 is going for extraction because of mesial migration and supra eruption this kind of case is nothing wrong in um, doing lower fulmoth also because lower also there is jaw problem and incisors they are not in correct position ok but now we are doing the upper one, the patient wants to do lower or later. You can see the cervical attraction here because of previous occlusal issues. Okay. Mm. So you can see the reverse cross bite here, right? So a kind of scissor bite here. Only this one is here. So the main challenge in this kind of case is giving a occlusion. What kind of bite we are going to give? Whether inside the ledge or proper overjet or bite, hey, we told the patient we will decide whether it is a edge change or what kind of sterics we can do. So when the patient comes today, we need to get a smile photo, proper smile photo. So whenever you are taking smile photo, we have to explain to the patient why you are taking smile. Photo. How much the lip is moving, how much your existing teeth are showing, whether gum, any gum is showing. This, these three factors uh, we have to take into consideration while doing surgery, sir. That is why we are taking a uh, smile photo. So, smile now. Okay. Because the patient may be thinking just for documentation, they are taking photo. They may not, if you don't tell the reason, they may not understand the importance of it, they may not talk about it. So you have to tell why we are taking the uh, smile. So giving anterior occlusion and molar occlusion may be a challenge. So because it is class 3, mm -hmm. intra um, okay, the lower teeth are out, the upper teeth are in because of class 3. So upper, both upper posterior and upper anterior there will be a cantilever. The implant will be on the ridge, but the tooth we have to give uh, buckley and lazily. Mm. Okay, 
because the mandible is bigger mm. the maxilla is comparatively smaller we will be placing implants over the crest of the dish but the tooth we have to give buccally and uh, labially so there will be cantilever both anteriorly and posteriorly so th this puts pressure on the implant so the implant is also is risky in the situation ok we are doing immediate loading also we are not doing delay so the risk is small so our plan is to make sure there is no implant failure in future um, even though we are giving cantilever it should survive <coughs> it should also in the way so uh, how to do it so one technique is to do the over engineering mm. okay, over engineering means place more implants yes. okay it is one way of uh, getting success so we are planning to do over engineering because of the reason of uh, one reason is it's a class okay. 3 and the cantilever is there and second reason is his muscles are very uh, no bulky and he looks muscular the face definitely he will chew hard he is quite hefty also right he is not underweight so definitely the masticatory forces will be you can see the masseter here it's not a big jaw it is a very heavy jaw so the forces of mastication will be more to withstand the increased masticatory forces also we need to do over engineering okay so we may have to put more than 8 implants for this patient and another reason why we are planning to do over engineering is the bone is very not very cortical it's cancellous mm -hmm. in the maxilla it's very cancellous it is very porous so we, we may have to look for the vitamin d deficiency osteoporosis okay mm -hmm. so now we will plan now we understand there is we are going for upper full mouth the only thing we need to get is is there any gummy smile mostly there won't be any gummy smile i don't think so but we have to take a smile for proper smile photo and smile video okay then only we will get idea so before starting the patient what you have to do is take a smile photo take a smile video and put a mark in the nose in the chin keep on scale and take photo because this vedi is almost it is good correct so we will replicate during jarlation and when you are keeping the scale make sure you are not hiding the mark because they have to put mark in the exact place where you are placed you understand because you might be placing mark here they may be placing mark here just don't tell the vedi is 68 something something like that you have to send the photo so they will put the mark in the same position okay so three things smile photo smile video vedi then confirm the plan before the patient upper full mouth lower seven extraction and this is canine uh, this is this broken teeth composite builder but with consent and we may have to do composite builder for com uh, premolars if needed okay so these are lingually inclined that means only the buccal cusp is uh, touching the occlusion okay they are not straight they are lingually tilted that means the lingual cusp is down the buccal cusp is higher so there will be only one point of uh, contact will be there so we may have to do filling over the occlusal surface ok here the cusp is also very prominent ok so we may have to and decay is also there so we have to tell these two decay is there and to give occlusion we may have to do see this premolar it looks like canine there is no lingual cusp at all so chewing he may have problem because there is no occlusal table it's only a, a point so we have to build up here both uh, you know lateral sorry uh, both premolars on both sides so before starting we have to do smile photo smile video mini photo discuss the plan again and get a written consent okay first thing is get consent then other things considering the la we have to give la for the upper jaw first okay finish the upper jaw then give la uh, anesthesia for the lower jaw and go for extraction of uh, some or eight okay 
Don't give both jar at the same time. Why? Yeah, Anastasia, Anastasia will come down when we come to lower. And another thing is, we have to make sure. Uh, we immediately pushing no lot of uh, LA into the systemic system. He may get no systemic side effects. So the safe is to give only that. Okay, now we will do the implant planning. Do you understand? Before jumping into implant planning, you have to plan this much of things. Okay. So the height wise it has got sufficient height, there is no sinus, uh, this is a, this is kind of a rare cases where there is no sinus expansion, pneumatization, okay. But the problem is the bone is very porous, you can see, minus 88, okay, 100, 200, 12, so it's classic osteoporotic, uh, okay. Anteriorly it is somewhat okay in the 1 1 2 1 region. Mm -hmm. This is 1 1. So here the bone is somewhat it looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, 300, 400 something. So if you reach here, here it is 1300, the nasal. Mm -hmm. So we will get use of that. Okay. See here this is 1 2 region. The Alveolar bone is very cancerous, minus, okay, but the nasal floor is good. So we have to use this nasal floor because it is cortical. Okay. This is 2 1. 2 1 is quite decent. The bone is good, right? We will see 2 2. 2 2 is also okay. The problem is in the premolar and molar areas. Maybe after extraction there is no stimulation to the bone, it might have reduced our vitamin D deficiency or whatever or general osteoporosis. Okay. See the crystal bone is 500. But inside it is minus. This is the what is this floor? This This is the nasal, this is the nasal floor. Okay. This is the nose. This is the nasal cavity. Okay. Understand that. Okay, 800. So many people think nose is only in the anterior. The nasal cavity travels backwards, right? Even in eight region, nose is there. This is eight, eight. Okay. Medially nasal cavity, laterally sinus cavity. Okay. Because many doctors, I think, uh, the nasal cavity is only in the canine to canine. When you go to premolar molar, there is no nose. Anteriorly you see only nasal cavity, posteriorly you see both nasal cavity and sinus, sinus cavity. This mm is -hmm. the basic mm -hmm. So the key area is always the first and second premolar first, plan in that area. Okay. So second quadrant we will plan first, this is the second premolar, sorry first premolar. First premolar how many roots? Two roots. Okay. And the buccal root is very close to the labial plate. And the anatomy is such that if you go through the apex too much, you may perforate maybe. Yeah. So you have to stay close to the palatal thing. Using palatal socket of first premolar is a good idea. Okay, the bone is good. You can place a 4.2 mm implant. So the length is up to 21. We have to do alveolar plastic. When we see preoperatively, there is less intraocular space. Definitely, we have to do 3 mm alveolar plastic. So 4.2, 18 or 20 will do. Okay. So this is the second premolar. Second premolar, the bone is very poor. So from the crest, it is around 21. We may have to do 3 mm alveolar plastic. So around 18 mm implant we can place. So in the first molar area, okay, in the first molar area. So this is the rare circumstances where you get, no, in the first molar area you are getting a 19 mm length. We get very less no, usually, but here it is more. But the problem is the bone quality is very poor. Okay. So this is the second molar area. Even second molar area you are having good quantity is there, but quality is not. Mm -hmm. So if you go medially, you will reach the nasal floor. If you go laterally, you will reach the sinus Okay. When you well, reach portion, good. So when you reach the eight area, 
you are getting the tuberosity uh, area. You make it little more stability. Okay. So left, we plan. Now we are coming to canning. You can see this canal here in the canning premolar area. This is the palatal approach. Amsa. Okay. So that is why giving anesthesia and the in between premolar is good. Diffuses here and it middle superior alveolar nerve is okay. So can I, the label plate is very thin. You can see here. Okay, the label plate is very thin. If it fractures, then it is a trouble. So we have to make sure we don't fracture it. Okay. If it fractures, we have to avoid implant in the canine because one and two one is two and two and two two is good. So our plan is place implant in the two and two two area. Leave the canine. And place, uh, yeah, from first premolar you can place uh, three or four implants. Okay, so here also the same one one and one two we will be placing two implants. Mm -hmm. We will be skipping the canine now because the canine is very long, the label plate is very thin. After extraction, you are getting less bone. Okay, so close to canine, you are getting more bone, right? Close to canine area. Get to around 22 mm implant, we will be going a bit past it, 2 mm, so we can 18 or 20 mm implant. So here if you see it is a kind of hourglass, no, okay, but that doesn't matter, okay. Here it is around uh, 3 mm, we need, here the crustal level we need good width, because the implant tapers, okay, so this hourglass is not a issue. The only thing is you should not perforate it like this. Okay, when you are drilling, you have to straight go through this. If you don't perforate it like this, don't perforate it like this. You have to go. Okay. So immediately behind the canine, there is good bone. In the second premolar area, so it's okay. Only the hourglass is the problem. In the molar area, it is the volume is good. As usual, the bone quantity quality is poor. So this is the second molar, this is the tuberosity area and the pterygoid. Okay. Even in pterygoid, only the pterygoid is good, somewhat good bone, 1000 something. If you want to reach pterygoid, you need you know, 20 mm. Otherwise you can use a VCS. If you want to put VCS, you need a 27, 28. Okay. So we will keep this in mind. Mm -hmm.